So hi there viewers, my name is Matt Russell, I'm with Discuss Marketing, and I'm here today with Mike Leon. Hi! Who is an MBA grad here at Wilfrid Laurier University, as well as an associate professor. Um, Mike's background is in social media and brand communication, and so we're going to use his experiences here to kind of give you some insights on, on your personal lives. So, cool. Uh, Just to clarify, I'm actually not an associate professor, but I'm, uh, I own a marketing agency, but I'm an instructor as well. Okay. There you go. <laughs> there you go, something for the blog. <laughs> So uh, our first question is just what's your background overall in social media and sure. kind of where do you see it now and where do you see it going in the future? So I, I guess in, in, a, in, a, in a sort of cheeky kind of way, I always like to say that I've been doing social media before it was actually called social media. Uh, my background is I started off in television and uh, initially when we were creating TV shows, I was always looking for interesting ways to engage with audience. Uh, everything from you know email contests to any special bonus materials that we can give audiences. Basically anything we can do to make people feel really special and get people engaged. And as the technology started to improve and as, as platforms like social media, like Facebook and YouTube started to come online, it just gave so many more opportunities to engage with people. So for me, that's around the same time that I went back to school, I started a marketing agency of my own, and really started devoting a lot of my work towards helping companies really make that personal connection. So that, that, that's a lot of my background. And I've just kind of kept it going. So we, you know, we work with universities, we work with colleges, we work with a lot of tech companies. Basically anybody that has a story to tell that's looking for an interesting way to tell it. Okay. And as you, as you can see where market fair social media is going in the future, do you have any kind of insights? Or? Any crystal ball oracle type <laughs> insights to that? You know, I think it's always, it's always really focused on a really simple principle, which is find a way to make the content interesting, not just for you, but for your audience. And I think that for you pieces is, is a really challenging one because companies care about themselves, they have to. And companies want to put the best foot forward. But what they don't often realize, and I'm guilty of this as much as anybody, is that people aren't necessarily going to care as much about me as I care about myself. So social media is a very, very important reminder of that, a by-the-minute reminder that we always have to stay relevant of what's not most important for us, but most important for our audience. And when you have an agenda and you're trying to sell something, that can be really challenging because you're constantly thinking about what you need and what you want. But what you really need to think about is what your audience needs, what your audience wants, and how you can tailor that content to really address that. Okay. Um, so next we'll move on to Mike's uh, kind of teaching expertise. So you've recently created a course marketing and social media here at Laurier. Mm -hmm. And the course is uh, not your generic course. I mean, it's, it's really taking a new aspect of the business world and bringing it to the classroom. So what kind of challenges have you had kind of developing a curriculum and even learning style, teaching style? What kind of challenges have you faced? Well, you know, it's a good question because I think one of the things I've struggled with is having, uh, having been teaching at the MBA level, uh, and a little bit at the BBA level for the last four years, I think one of the things that I tried to do is social media is so different. So I, I didn't want to teach it the same way that I would teach another course. So then kind of begs the question, well, how do you make it different? You know, you're in a lecture hall, you're, you're up at the front of the class. How do you make the content a little bit different? And to be honest with you, you know, it, it's something that I'm still sort of trying to figure out. And one of the great things about social media is that you can always be workshopping and always figuring things out as you go along. So I think for me, you know, one of the things that's been exciting is engaging with you guys on Twitter and in between classes as well. Um, I'd like to do a better job of that, but it's nice to kind of see the conversation as it goes between classes. And I think the other thing too is, as much as possible, you know, I really see my job more as a facilitator than an instructor or a professor. So I want to bring up topics, but I really want you guys to help drive the bus in terms of how they're discussed. So I think for me, you know, I view this course in many ways as a little bit of a social experiment. You know, how can we deliver the content in a way that's not just me pushing content out to you, but us tackling those issues together? And I, my hope is we'll just, as we go further and further along, we'll figure out new ways to do that. Yeah, absolutely. And just as a student in the class, I mean, using Twitter and, and just a series of platforms being pushed into using new platforms has really kind of opened my eyes to seeing just new ways that you can really market yourself as a, as a student and a business. That's great to know. Now, can I ask you a question as well? Sure. I know this was mainly geared at, uh, at instructors, but as a student, how has social media changed the way that you want to learn content and that you want to be engaged with by professors? Because that whole model has really changed over the years, right? Yeah, I mean, 
I think what social media has done is even made people maybe a little bit more impatient. Like people are so used to just having such immediate kind of reactions to things, right? And if you're not kind of catching attention within that first I guess, 10 seconds of, of speaking or, or what you're talking about and, and engaging, it's, it's going to be difficult. So really just, I don't know, I guess being relatable is, is really the main, the main thing. And a lot of the examples or videos that you've shown us, with, whether it be, uh, I don't know, just a lot of the, the car companies and their kind of push and forward, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's kind of a bit more streamlined and a little bit more relatable. So, nice. Yeah. Um, third question. It's about uh, about your business. So, yeah. So you've been able to kind of create this ad agency and, and help companies. Out. What kind of uh, tools have you have you been able to learn from that into your personal life and, and to, into the classroom as well? Um. I mean, I guess there's a couple of things. I mean, one of them is you know my uh, my dad's a tailor, and when I was growing up, he always used to have this famous line that any time. I was talking about anything, be it you know my soccer team, hockey, uh, my bar mitzvah, everything. You'd always link it back to sales and say you're always selling. And I always used to laugh at him and say, ah, it's hockey, you're not selling. But I realized, starting my own business, you are. You are always selling. Whether you're actually trying to get work or not, that's a different story. But you're trying to sell a perspective, you're trying to sell a point of view, you're trying to uh, sell collaboration. So you really always are selling. And that goes for you guys as students as well. And I think you know one of the, the biggest lessons I've had around that in owning a business is a big part of selling is figuring out not only what you want to say, but how you want to be seen by the world. So developing your own personal brand. So having a company that has the word brand in the title has always made me really keenly aware of what I'm looking to project and put out there in the world. And also what I'm looking to get back. You know, how do I want to be seen as a brand and how do I want to engage with my audience? And I'll give you a really basic example of it. I've been proud of the work that we've done as a company, but I felt like for a while one of the things that was missing was the brand hero's personality. We would go in, we would do the work, we'd do a great job, and then we would move on. But I felt like there wasn't enough that was memorable about us. So I sat with my staff and really asked the question, what do we do that's memorable that, that stands out from any other company? And we realized one of the things that we never really took stock of before is that we all really like food. And we just end up bringing food to meetings and we end up having food when we brainstorm. So we thought, well, why don't we make this a part of our process that we'll bring cupcakes and we'll bring you know, really good stuff that clients like. And we brought it to the point where we actually started to operationalize it as a protocol. We'd go to meetings and we'd bring food. And I realized at the end of it that while the work still was paramount, people started to really remember those types of touches. And when they talked about Brand Heroes as a company, they said, oh yeah, you do really good work. Oh, and you brought really good cupcakes. So I realized, yeah, we always are selling and we're always putting our perspective out there. So I think it's a constant lesson that I'm, I'm learning every day and that the business has really helped reinforce. Great, great. And if you don't mind just telling the viewers just a few companies that you have worked with, just to give them some perspective on, on who you've helped, or maybe just one good example. Sure. So on the education side, um, we've worked with Laurier. We've uh, we work with um, uh, York University, the University of Toronto, Ryerson. Uh, we're doing a major project with um, uh, with George Brown College right now, and really uh, all the projects are really cool. But there's a really neat project with um, the university equivalent of the the college equivalent of the application board which if you apply for a college program, you have to go through this service. So what we're doing is we're using animation to really show how easy it is to actually use it and some of the benefits. And we're even using humor as a way to make it a little easier for people to understand how they can use it. Uh, so that's some of the work we've done. In the past, we've worked for Mattel Canada. Uh, I know way more about Barbie than I never cared about men. Uh, I guess I just did. Um, we've uh, done a lot of work with uh, the Second City, uh, the communications arm of the, uh, the comedy troupe, uh, Microsoft, Intel, a fair amount of technology companies. Uh, but tech and education is kind of the, the two spaces we really play the most in. Excellent. Okay, and just a, a final question. So we've been asking all the profs just very generally. Sure. Um, so you are somewhat of a younger prof in, in general. I appreciate the somewhat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so just in your years of experience, so just what kind of fundamental challenges have you faced in the classroom and, and kind of what, just one or two, and just how have you overcome kind of those challenges? Um, you know, I, I think, especially as a part-time instructor, you know, it's, I was a little starstruck when I first started teaching because, um, you know, a lot of the people who 
taught me are still here. And in, in a couple of cases, I ended up teaching their classes. So it was a real sort of weighty sense of responsibility of, wow, you know, can I, can I do this even half as good as they did it? And it was a little stressful at first because, you know, a lot of these folks have years and years and years of experience. And while I'm really proud of the industry experience I bring into it, you know, especially when I first started teaching, I just didn't have the same level of experience on the academic side. So I think, you know, part of what was a little bit nerve-wracking to me at times and a little unnerving is, you know, how can I make sure I'm giving my students value? And how can I make sure I'm bringing to the table something that's going to be of value to them? Uh, four years later, I mean, I feel a little more confident about it. I mean, I still, you know, my, my experience of what I'm bringing to the table is very different from some other folks. But I also believe that in a sense, you know, it's what's kept me here and it's what uh, it's what keeps me engaging. So I think it's become something that's been a point of differentiation for me, just like other colleagues, their experience has been a point of differentiation for them. Um, I think, uh, you know, one of the things that I really like about what you guys are doing is I've always really, I've been really lucky because I've had some great folks who taught me, who continue to teach and who are very open to share their knowledge. And, you know, as I kind of go along, I'd love to continue to do that. I'd love to continue to pick the brains of people who teach brands and social media, not just here, but at other institutions as well. Uh, so I think, you know, that there, there's a real excitement around just talking and just hearing what people are doing and getting interesting ideas. You yeah, know, I think that's an excellent point. I mean, as a student myself, I'm constantly asking myself, what can I get out of this class that's going to help me in the real world? And, especially in this fourth year here, and you said you teach a lot of MBA classes as well, I feel like that's really what the value is, is kind of being derived from these classes, is what can we use? And so it's, it is kind of effective in that, in that way. And I think you guys play a really strong role, not just in shaping the content, but influencing the way it's taught. Like I, uh, you know, I feel really lucky that, you know, I've kept in touch with a number of my students as they've gone on to, like the one other time I taught undergrad, I've kept in touch with some students who've gone on to do grad work, or gone on to the workforce and it's always kind of interesting hearing from them you know how the workforce is going how some of the stuff they learned is applying it, and also you know how some of the surprises they've learned in the workforce that they they would have liked to know a little more about here so it's great to kind of get that feedback too of hey you should have really taught us this or hey it would be good to know this and I try and kind of bring that back into the classroom as well all right, so that's all the questions I have for you today. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah, my pleasure. I'm sure the viewers have uh, got a lot of experience with that. Just a quick reminder, uh, stay tuned for more videos to come. Uh, you can follow us at Twitter at, at DMC underscore forum. And we also have our blog, discussmarketingcanada.blogspot.ca. All right, till next time.